What's up guys, I'm Dunmir, I'm a rank 1 peak supervived player, and I have almost 1000 hours played in this game, 200 of which were on this character, Celeste. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a build guide talking about what her best items are, what her best powers are, um, and then the level order you should level her up in, and which ability you should take to level 3. Getting right into it, um, Celeste actually has some of the higher build diversity in the game with her items here. Um, there are a couple different things you can do, and you can build her fully damage oriented, mid oriented or um, fully tank, right? That you can do a lot of different things on this character, which is pretty cool. Um, having said that, I do have to say that I believe her best two items are Guardian's Respite and Amplifier, um, using, assuming you're using the Meditation Boots to compensate for your lack of a mana item. Um, so that's what the build, that's the build I would recommend the most. It gives her a lot of damage still, um, while still giving her a pretty healthy amount of tankiness with the bonus shield percentage of your 15% max HP shield that you get from having Guardian's Respite. So that's really powerful. Um, but if you are, um, if you're trying to play one of his other builds, that's viable too, right? So I have, you know, I showed some different builds here. I used a Mana Blade here on this, uh, this damage oriented build with a lot of thought towards just sitting there and spamming out your cooldowns and stuff like that. Um, all of the boots are viable on Celeste, but I would say that if you're wanting to play a little bit slower, which I still would recommend as the most like viable playstyle on on Blessed. Um, play slow and then bam your cooldowns and look for an opportunity. Um, you're gonna get a lot of value out of having these meditation boots on. Um, but if you're running the Mind Blade, you're finding yourself just consistently running out of mana um, while you're doing this damage build, then you put the Mind Blade on with the amplifier, uh, and then you'll find yourself not really needing the the meditation boots. So you can go for something else like change up. Um, because you probably won't get much value off of the the Wisp Stomping Gain HP boots, the Soul Drain, just because you don't have that much HP and it's more risky, right? So, um, having said that, um, the tankier build, the Guardian's Respite and Helm of Gigantism version, is pretty cool because it's kind of the highest like base stats you can have in the game, um, because you're getting this bonus max HP shield from Guardian's Respite, and you're also getting an additional set of AP based on the max HP that you have. So you're getting extra damage for being tanky um, with Guardian's Respite, or Helm of Gigantism is giving you that because of its HP and then Guardian Respite's HP. So it's pretty cool. Um, it gives you like, you know, if other characters are playing with 100% of the base stats, you're playing with like 125% or something like that. Um, yeah. So um, on for other options though, if you're trying to shake things up a little bit, um, of course you have Guardian's Respite, Amplifier, really powerful, Mind Blade, Helm of Gigantism, great. But um, Turbo Booster is another option that I think might have some pretty strong power on Celeste. Um, specifically, if you throw it onto this core damage build and you were to run something like Turbo Booster, um, Amplifier with a Meditation Boots, um, I think that's a really exciting build just because you have the ability to just press shift um, and you're, you're farming your dash off of your Amplifier um, and getting that dash really, really low. And it's already really low because you're you know, it, it goes down, it recovers a lot faster if you if you uh, release it a lot closer. So with the amplifier and then stacking that up, you could probably get that up to like a, um, maybe a one second cooldown if you do a tap dash, right? Um, and while you tap dash, you get extra damage from your primary fires. So that's a really cool option, right? Um, to just play around with as it's like sneaking around like dash burst, dash burst, dash burst, dash burst kind of thing. Um, and then you're getting extra movement speed from Turbo Booster when you're doing it. So it's just a really cool concept to, to play around with. Um, if you're wanting to run a tanky build and you're still finding yourself struggle a lot on mana problems, then just go ahead and drop like the Helm of Gigantism for Scholar. Um, it's like the cooldown reduction on a character like Celeste is just too valuable. Um, she's a very cooldown oriented character with her shield um, and then her little ice spears. So with her wall, I mean her ice spears. So running something like Scholar is really, really valuable. Um, and going from there, like, you know, there are some other options, maybe with Power User, Race, Last Stand. Um, they're pretty niche though, so I would I would maybe play around with them if you really want to, um, but they're not gonna be that good for you. Um, and then the rest of Interweaver, Big Game, Ambrush, Five Infuser, eh, I wouldn't, maybe, maybe there's some secret build, but realistically anything below niche tier just doesn't have a place on Celeste. All right, so getting right into the level order here, um, I think it's really important to start off at level one with your dash. 
Celeste does get some extra damage from her dash, so, you know, she doesn't have some of the same problems that other characters do by just picking their dash. Um, but some people argue to go for a large AoE cooldown, like for the, like the, the Ice Spears at level 1. Um, just because you can use it to burst down a mob camp and guarantee you get your level 2 really quickly. And so it's just quicker and faster. Yeah, it saves you a little bit of time. Um, maybe it could be an option in a contest, but even in a situation like that, you're risking not getting those mobs and then being level 1 without your dash. It's, uh, it's really bad for fighting, really bad for... Um, really bad for, you know, in case you need to run away. So I always recommend going dash first. Right. For level 2, um, I recommend going with Ice Spears. The wall is such a powerful cooldown, but at the level 1, there isn't a lot, or at like low level fights, there isn't a lot for you to need, that you need to block with it. And it's on a 25 second cooldown. So it's it's not that useful. So Ice Spear level 2, level 3, Ice Wall. Um, from there, I recommend going back into shift, into your dash. Um, I just think it's too important to have the dash speed. Um, I always want to go onto the like hit ice wall again, but the problem is you're just like your dash is on quite a long cooldown uh, before that, and so knocking that down to three seconds is is kind of just feels like it's a must, right? Um, or knocking that down by three seconds, considering it knocks down your like the slower lower dashes also. Um, like, going for the wall and dropping that cooldown from 25 seconds to 15 seconds is a really big deal too, but it's just like, you know, both of these are really good. What are we going with? Um, and usually your safer option tends to be going for your dash. However, if you got yourself a movement cooldown, uh, like eye power, then go ahead and go for the, the wall earlier, you know? All right. Um, for level five, we're going to hop on over into our ult. Her ult's really strong. Go ahead and pick it for sure. Um, from there, we're going to double up on our wall um this will change a little bit if you're going one of these other builds but if you're going for just a general build um or really any of the ones i mentioned that wasn't that like really weird like spam skate build you're gonna want to go with frozen barricade hitting it to level six drops this cooldown by 10 seconds um and then doing it again will give you a double wall health um that raises it up from 1000 to 2000 that, especially if you're playing a tankier build, changes Celeste from being kind of like unreliable to being reliable and how much she can block. Right? It's pretty bad to like try and aggro into some situation to help your team or whatever and have your um your wall break, right? It's a it's it's <laughs> it's risking death, right? It's not good. Um like there are other things that you want. Like the thing about Celeste is there's a lot of things that you want, right? Yes, you want to have her her cryo spears, her you know her little ice spear things. You have a minus 3.5 second cooldown. Like that's useful, right? You want to have um like that. You would want to consider going for that too, right? Before you do these other wall, like the, the third wall one. But um the wall is just too valuable. So you go wall for level seven also. Then you consider um going for ice spear. Um, I tend to default towards cooldowns rather than raw damage or something. Um, what you're getting for leveling up your ult to level 2 is a additional 40% damage and then a minus 15 second cooldown. But the thing about the cooldowns with the ultimates is that it's knocking it down from 75 to 60, which basically is not that useful. Because either you're getting resets from killing a full team, or you are um, getting third partied and having like 40 seconds left rather than, or 25 seconds left rather than 40, right? So it doesn't help you. Um, and 40% damage on the ult, you're not using it for the damage, so I would hop on over to Cryo Spirit level 8 and then finalize with your ultimate when you need to. Alright, so getting into the powers here, um, this tier list I've made here, or tier list appearing looking thing, um, is essentially a, a way, it should be thought of in regards to how the randomness of the BR is. Um, you can't always guarantee you're going to get what you want, so collect items on this list, um, starting from the bottom if you run into them, and then when you run into them, you cycle progressively upwards, right? Um, so if you walk in and you find some of these ones at the bottom, great, these are ones that are easier to find. Um, trade them out for ones on the higher portions of this, this tier list here, when you, uh, you get rare options, right? Um, with this, um, the way the Celeste powers work and the way that um, her builds work, is that you're really going to want to try and customize your your um, your power selection to your type of character that you're playing. So if you're going for one of these like hyper high damage builds, um, you're not going to get as much value from something like Delicate Barrier on the far right side. Um, 
the axe one that gives you 50% damage reduction for two seconds once you start taking damage. But if you're running something like Guardian's Respite, that gives you a shield that um, stops you from being damaged. So it means your damage is 50% taken until that's broken. Um, and then two seconds afterwards, that's really strong, right? Um, similarly, some other sustain based powers like the Berry Eater combo on the, the yellow dash row, that one is going to give you some ability to sustain, right? Just pop it down, eat those berries, get a lot of healing. Um, but you know, you're not going to get as much value from it on the low damage or the high damage build with low HP. So stay away from it on that one um, and default to some of these other options, right? Um, or like, for example, like something like the sand wall. The sand wall might be a better option in that circumstance because um, you might be able to use it to block the damage that's going to come blow you up that the berry eater won't sustain you through because you're not that tanky, right? Um, and you'll do a lot better on a lighter build with things like Air Blast also in the strong category or the purple uh, guy stuck in that beam or whatever, anti moby field, to keep people off you while you're trying to poke early on, right? So you can maybe farm up your amplifier um, ice spheres. And you can sit there and you can spam people, spam people, spam people, and force them to come into you. Um, so that's like, you know, those are kind of some of the differences, right? Um, maybe like, maybe you're looking at um, just straying away from these sustain based powers when you're running for the damage things and instead you're doing like your mobility stuff like you're trying to get a grappling hook or um maybe these these hover wings um the tankier builds are going to get a lot of value out of things like the uh the healing items here these or sorry not the healing items the um guardian angels here the purple one and then the red one and strong and then above it because you actually will be able to sustain yourself standing on top of an ally to help res them right because it speeds up your red speed in addition to applying a passive res to them you don't stand on the one um and so that's kind of how you should think about this stuff right there's lots of unique options you can do um in general some of these powers are gonna get really really just powerful in general um you're gonna have things like hover wings like i said it's really useful on the damage base build because it's going to let you get into the enemy's team. It's going to pop your ultimate and just push into the enemy team with it. Because if you use the hover wings um, and then ult, you carry your ult carries with the wings. And so you just keep going into enemies and they don't expect it. It's hard for them to deal with. Um, same thing with um, the, uh, the uh, Abyss Specials here on the left, the cloud. That's super valuable. Just gives you a dash um, on either build. Either to use it aggressive and then dash in, throw some spears, dash out. Um, over the abyss to get the reset or you're doing the opposite of that where you are um, you know if you're on tanky build you're just using it to give you a free engage to push into the enemy team um, and knock them out of locations right it's super valuable and if you combo the hover wings with the abyss specialist abyss specialist resets your hover wings when you use it over the abyss too so that's a crazy combo um, having said that there's also a crazy power that I'm going to talk about about why Bungie is so high up on this category. Um, Bungie is absolutely insane um, for multitude of reasons. You can use it to block off like a side angle so that people have a hard time getting past it. Um, or you could put it on locations where they literally can't jump up above it. Um, whereas normally they'd just be able to like, if you slow them with anything or you damage them, they're going to get hit by it. They're going to land in the Bungie and get messed up either away from you or get pulled into your team to die. Um, but you can just use it, like I said, on like high grounds or on the edge of the abyss to block people actually just perma um but celeste has other options too in addition to the defensive versions and the like the version of just hitting an enemy and pulling them towards you or pulling them into each other um where if you dash into a bungee you set up and then you hold the opposite direction you will travel like insane distance right um you can use it with a short dash to give yourself like a full engage on the enemy team it's a free movement cooldown it's just obscene you uh, stack it up with your ultimate and you can give yourself like a giga jump ult into the enemy team. Um, it's just goofy, like what you can actually do with it. So um, go ahead and give that a try. And uh, I'm going to make a full video on that. So watch out for that. And uh, you'll get to see some crazy stuff with with uh, Bungie on Celeste. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions or have anything to say, go ahead and throw them into the comments below or come follow me on my Twitch and my YouTube when I'm streaming and uh, go ask them there.